So I'm here at the infamous London Natural History Museum and I wanted to do a series that really encapsulates the amazing collections that can be found here where I can actually share the wonders and treasures of this museum with the entire world and that's what we're doing here. So welcome to episode one of my new series which is Curiosities of the Natural History Museum and today we're talking about the building itself. So you can see behind me that the architecture here is incredible. It almost resembles what looks to be a Gothic cathedral. It's got a lot of kind of unusual architecture aspects. And many people must think this probably had a previous use before it became the London Natural History Museum. You're wrong. This was built in the late 19th century. So in 1881, it was completed, but it was always designed with the purpose to be a natural history museum. And it was built as a cathedral to nature. That was its purpose by the first director, Sir Richard Owen. That was his dream. And he didn't want this to be somewhere that the socially elite could only come and it had a very high price tag. This was a place that anyone and everyone could come and visit for free to see the wonders of natural history. And since then, it is still a thriving place that attracts over 5 million visitors a year. And even in its first year of opening, it attracted over 200,000 people in a time when that was quite an achievement. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the building itself because it's a very simple design, but it was the first building in England to actually be made with a terracotta front. Now this is a very cheap building material, but what it means is the designers and architects, Alfred Waterhouse was one of the main ones, was able to design really intricate aspects of the building with living and extinct creatures clustering everywhere on it. So we've got monkeys climbing arches, we've got fish swimming in the walls, we've got extinct creatures as gargoyles. It is an incredible building that the details really do just complete it. This building has the grandest features and I can only show you some of them and I'm not doing them any justice, but they are just incredible. And so these have existed for centuries. Like this, this building has always been here and has been here exactly as it is. This building is covered in creatures, living and extinct. So these were hand drawn by Alfred Waterhouse and then created by modelers, um, Farmer and Brandley, I believe. Coming back to Sir Richard Owen, the first director. Now he was a biologist, anatomist and paleontologist by education, if you like. Now he worked with the British Museum for many years and he was campaigning for over 25 years to actually get this site at South Kensington and it wasn't until 1863 that Parliament decided that it would happen. And there were many collections at the British Museum in about 1856 that were deteriorating and Richard Owen was watching these deteriorate and he knew something had to be done. He wanted a place that was safe for collections but also free for everyone to visit. So he didn't want it to be socially, only socially elite people or people in you know, higher income families. He wanted everyone to have access to this and learn about the science. And still to this day, that's why the museums here in London are free. And when it was built, funny enough, the gardens around the museum were meant to be more buildings. But for the first few decades, they didn't have the funding to build those buildings. So they actually built huge sand pits that they used as places to rot the carcasses of huge whales um, to then add to the collection. So there's a lot of history here of little facts that I really want to share with you because this is such a wonderful place. It's the reason I got into what I do now and the reason I share all this passion with you guys because I had this place to spark that curiosity. But along with the spectacular exterior, this also continues inside the building. So those amazing terracotta motifs can be seen around the arches as you enter and all throughout the building. But along with that, the ceilings are also painted. So we have spectacular plant paintings all over the ceiling, 162 of them to be exact. Now these are painted by artists in 1881 where they would have had to lay down on scaffolding and paint these above their heads directly onto the ceiling plaster. Now these have had to be redone once in 1975, um, but apart from that, these are the original plant species that you see hand done back in the day. However, we don't actually understand the thinking behind these species. So some of them represent beautiful plants that bring a lot of joy. Others represent really awful plants that have brought about a lot of human suffering. So the thinking behind which ones were put there is still unknown, but it's still a wonderful thing to appreciate. And that's the thing, if you ever visit the London History Museum, make sure you look up. So let's take a look inside now and um, see what's in the hall. So we've now made it into Hintzy Hall, which is the main heart of this museum. And this is where Hope the Whale can be seen beautifully displayed behind me. Now it used to be Dippy the Diplodocus, but Dippy went on tour, I'm sure some of you will know, and it's now become Hope's pride of place. 
Now, there's a lot of history to hope because she's not a young whale, but she is a young whale. So she died when she was about 15 years old, but she was found in 1891. So this is a very old skeleton. And amazingly, she was only moved here about five years ago, and she used to live for over 80 years in the mammal section of the museum. And she was then decided to be moved to kind of the heart where everyone was going to see her. And I'm so glad they did. And in moving her, they also placed her in a diving lunge position, which I think just really gives her that kind of final legacy. Now, the engineering side of hanging her is a huge task. Now, this is a four-ton whale skeleton that is 25 meters long. She is composed of over 200 bones. This is not an easy thing to hang from the ceiling, let alone in a way that doesn't damage the bones. But somehow, after three years of work, the History Museum has managed to do so, and it is a magnificent thing to be able to see. I really do recommend giving it a go. Back in 1891, when she was beached in Ireland on a sandbar, local fishermen tried for a few days to save her, but unfortunately, once whales are beached, it's very, very hard to save them. And so eventually her bones and skeleton was auctioned off to the Natural History Museums for a whopping 250 pounds. So that's when she then, her home became the History Museum. She ended up in the mammals department for 80 plus years and she then was eventually moved. So after 130 years after she died, scientists were able to do extra studies on her that revealed a lot more about those final years of her life. So the studies were all focused on her baleen plates, which are almost look like teeth, but they're this filter feeding system that whales have that allow them to scoop up seawater with a load of food inside of it, such as krill, and they then push out the water, leaving just the krill to eat. So it's a very clever system. And what they can do is they can look at the chemical makeup of these baleen plates and also analyze the hormones of them to work out what was going on in Hope's life. So she was about a 15-year-old whale at the time of her death, so the first portion of her life was very much just feeding and growing and doing the usual migration into subtropical waters and just going north to south. So during the latter part of her life, the hormone levels suggest that she was actually pregnant and had a calf. Now, it was shortly after this that she then beached herself. So this is only a theory, but it's amazing that current scientific techniques are able to reveal so much more about such an ancient specimen. And I think it's really amazing to kind of piece together her life as best we can and then always see her here at the heart of the museum because this is one spectacular skeleton. And if you ever get the chance to come and visit, I mean, she is one heck of a whale. So that's all we got for episode one. And here you can see a little sneak peek for what we're gonna do next week. Um, so try and take a good guess. But thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll be back with more next week. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.